Um, so I think that's the challenge. I have another uh, story for you, which is um, a, a personal story about actually my, my, my dad. It was some number of years ago. My dad actually went into cardiac arrest uh, in, a, in a restaurant. And um, it took a while for the ambulance to get there. Uh, so but, uh, eventually uh, he got, got to a hospital. And I was, you know, it was, unfortunately, there was a whole party of people. So there was a bunch of people who were in the waiting room waiting to see what happened. It was a frightful moment. A resident comes out and says, um, you know, your dad's brain dead. And you have to sign a do not resuscitate. And, you know, I, um, I dare to ask, like, why? Like, how do you know? You know, he's brain dead. And, of course, they had a statistical model with a combination of variables where, on average, uh, everything that had happened, you know, the age, the wait time for the ambulance, um, the blood pressure, the dilation of the pupils, and so forth and so on, you know, strongly correlated with, you know, your dad's brain dead. There's a 98% chance, I was told. And I said, I'm sorry. But, like, if I was betting on this... Uh, and I had to bet a thousand times. I do pretty well with those odds. But this is a very asymmetrical risk. I need to know exactly why you think my dad, the man in that room, and they were doing all these hero- heroic measures at that point, trying to keep him alive, uh, keep his heart beating, why you think he's brain dead. And so the resident says, well, I'm sorry, I can't help you. You have to talk to the chief cardiologist. And I raised the same questions with the chief cardiologist. And he said, well, his pupils are dilated. And I said, is there another reason why his pupils might be dilated? And there was a pause. Well, we do give him a drug in the ambulance that dilates his pupils. Okay, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so no, so no. Until you can give me deductive evidence that that man, my father, is brain dead, then I'll t- we'll talk about signing a do not resuscitate. And I wouldn't sign it. Long story short, um, the doctor made me make all the decisions because he was convinced. So to decide whether or not he should be moved, what kinds of drugs should be given, and what the pros and cons of the drugs are. So here I am making all these decisions. Long story short, 18 hours later, my dad's sitting up in bed, zero brain damage. Hey, Dad, and I, he said to me, hey, Dave, I understand you thought I was dead. And I'm like, yeah, all right. Um, anyway, so... Um, you know, step back. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we have to step back and think about, like, how do, we want to, how do we want to imagine what intelligence really is when artificial intelligence is going to play a bigger, bigger role in our lives? And there have been all these definitions, um, you know, some attributed to Alan Turing, to John McCarthy. And, like, one of the things I started to, to submit or propose is, can we define a definition that makes us humans who are designing, uh, designing these intelligences more accountable? Um, so here's one that says, uh, computers are intelligent if they can learn to answer and explain well enough for humans to take individual responsibility for any decision made on the basis of those answers. Yeah, that pinches a little bit. That stings a little bit. And this isn't to say that this kind of, this kind of accountability should exist in all cases. But we at least have to step back and think, is this how we should be imagining the role of artificial intelligence? Where does it really matter that we have these explanations that we can reason about and that we can critically analyze?